Al Jama may be considered a small political party within the landscape of South African politics, but changes in the governance landscape have seen the party get into multiple coalitions and thus gain more of a voice in municipalities across the country, one of which is the city of Johannesburg, where the party occupies the mayoral seat through Tapelo. Tapelo Kwamanda. Uh, in recent weeks, Al Jamal has made headlines after the party called on government to dismiss any proposals by the LGBTQI plus community for their inclusion in the revised white paper on family life. Joining us now to discuss this a bit more further is Hanif Hendricks. He is the leader of Al Jamal and he's here to talk to us uh, on coalitions as well as uh, his party's stance on uh, the LGBTQI plus community. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Hendricks, uh, for joining us here on the late edition. One would begin here. Let's start here. Why such a stance when it comes to the issue of family life, uh, especially that white paper that sits before Parliament? Look, uh, as you know, that uh, uh, everyone is entitled to make their uh, uh, contributions to developing a policy. That is what a white paper is for. If I take you back to the, uh, to the uh, Marriage uh, Act, where there was a position to recognize polyandry. So a lot of uh, communities uh, uh, objected to it, to such an extent that it was withdrawn, so it, it's not included in the Green Paper. Similarly, for Al Jama, it is uh, 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 the issue around uh, family life and the position of gay people is a matter of faith. So they're quite entitled to make their representations as strongly as they wish, just like the DA, for example, made a strong uh, 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 case for polyandry. They are entitled also to make a strong case. But uh, those of us from the faith community, if it's a matter of faith, it's not a question of how being homophobic. God can't be homophobic. So our position is that we will if they make submissions, just like others uh, had objections to polyandry, we will raise our concerns in terms of our faith, and that is what we're guided by. However, we have a very strong position uh, that gay people have a place in society. Our constitution says so. And uh, we, we just feel that the, uh, the, the Gay Pride Month was an attempt at grooming our children, because as they go to supermarkets like Woolworths, they will be seeing things that we don't want them to see. That's why if, when you're on DSTV, uh, you can uh, moderate the channel so children can't watch certain programs. So when children go to supermarkets and, and see uh, what parents don't want them to see, obviously uh, we will uh, raise concerns. Mm. You are saying that uh, this statement is not homophobic. You know, some m might argue and say that your stance may be uh, homophobic. And at the same time, in a democracy like ours, and like you said, you even quoted that uh, it's, it's recognized in our constitution. Why do you see it uh, as a way that uh, one would say that you're not respecting fully uh, the rights of many in our country? Look, we don't want people from our faith to embrace, uh, 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 you know, gay and uh, lesbian uh, relationships. Uh, and uh, we don't want our children to be groomed to be like that because, it, like I said, it's a matter of faith. And uh, our faith comes from God and God can't be homophobic because nearly, uh, you know, there are a lot of Christians. The Roman Catholic Church is very strong on it. The Muslim community is very strong, strong in it. Our own local Muslim Judicial Council who guides us to relate to religious matters issues a pretty statement. But at the same time, they urge us that, uh, that gay and lesbian people are part of a society and that, uh, you know, we must accept that. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any quarrels, but when they impose their will and try and groom our children, then it's a different story. But don't you think that children should have the, their own capacity to make that decision on their own? No, I don't think so, because that's why you have, uh, you know, these age restrictions on movies, for example, and parents can adjust it to prevent children uh, from seeing uh, uh, and, 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 and trying to be coerced into, into certain behavior. I suppose that because it was a gay month, the, 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 the campaign uh, was very extensive. 
Uh, rest of the year, I don't think we have uh, any any real concern, but because it was a gay a gay pride month, and you had a hundred uh, companies supporting them, and they had models in Woolworths, you know, with uh, that that we wouldn't want our children to see uh, uh, when they go to to the TV. Mm, and don't so you it's think a matter that's of a faith. good thing uh, for social cohesion in this country? Look, I already made it quite clear that we don't have a quarrel. It is when they impose their values and try and groom our children, then we have a quarrel. Mm. So, so, so uh, for example, our national spokesperson, when she took her children to Woolworths and they showed all those images, and the children came and, and grabbed her and said, Mommy, what is this? Because they're not used to it. You know, she, was, she had a personal experience and she merely took them away because parents have the right to control content. Their children see, I can't see how you can have a position that children must see everything, must see nude people, must see people having sex and all of that. That is not acceptable in our society and in our faith. Mm. So it's a question, it's a matter of faith. The Christians may be stronger than us, the Catholics even stronger. Uh, you know, so it's not for the Muslim community to be singled out because our, our religious authorities say that, you know, we, 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 they have a place. We must respect them. They are amongst our own family. Uh, they are amongst our own uh, clubs where we play sports. And uh, so there is that toleration and understanding all the years. But I suppose the Gay Pride Month, the activity was so intense uh, that it uh, bordered on trying to groom and convert others to that way of life. But what was it that you think, in your opinion, was grooming? Because I would have a completely different view on that. You are saying that, uh, you know, uh, recognizing gay pride is grooming uh, young children, uh, you know, uh, uh, to live up to that yeah, kind so of... So if you go into Woolwich and, and you see two uh, women dressed up and embracing and kissing, and you see two naked men, you know, in a very compromising position, we don't want our children to, to see that. So, for, so number one... Uh, uh, it tries and grooms them that nakedness is acceptable, whereas in Islam we have a dress code and our faith has a dress code. So here you see these dolls in very prominent positions all over the large Woolwood stores, uh, you know, and um, uh, uh, naked. And secondly, you see two women embracing and kissing and you have these sensual uh, 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 perceptions uh, uh, narratives that are being pushed and children haven't seen that at home, they haven't seen that in the neighborhood, they haven't seen that and now suddenly they con they confronted with it, they were at Woolworths maybe the week before to do their shopping, now they come to a place that they feel comfortable with and suddenly they see all of this and they grab their mother's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, legs and, 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 uh, and they're uncomfortable mm. with it. Now the mother has to explain, uh, you know, if they ask questions. So it makes it very difficult for parents. And I mean, I've never heard anyone have a quarrel with the age restrictions that uh, TV channels uh, like yourselves may have or other TV channels or pay channels that allow parents parental control. So, so, so it's, it's only not you've got to look into, into society as well. Mm. And Mr. Hendricks, do you think that uh, you will have a support in Parliament uh, by other political parties as well, uh, you know, considering your stance on this white paper? Look, I had supported Polly Andre, myself and the DA chief who afterwards they chucked her out uh, on this particular issue because it, it uh, went against the values of many DA people. But she was very strong and even the chief whoop of the ANC was very strong and felt women must have choice there. Women must be able to marry more than one husband. And, um, but I mean, society rebelled against it to such an extent that uh, uh, it wasn't included in the Green Paper. So if the uh, gay and lesbian community come up with proposals that we feel is going to groom our children into their way of life and their lifestyle, we're certainly going to raise our objections because our ulama bodies, the religious leaders, have already given us direction. Mm. So it's not a position that we, as a has personally taken. We are guided by our religious leaders. We are guided by our faith, we are guided by the Qur'an, and no one can tell us that Allah or our God is homophobic. Mm. That is ridiculous. 
Uh, do you think that uh, this has the potential uh, to be passed uh, in, in Parliament? You are saying that uh, uh, you had support uh, from some parties, uh, well, uh, some member in the DA. Uh, you know, does it seem as if uh, you are the only party that's pushing for this? Surely you will need support from other parties. Do you think that it has uh, the potential to be passed? Look, we don't know what the proposals will be. So you can ask me on something hypothetical. But so what I've said is that if there are any proposals uh, from the gay and lesbian community for their safety, for their security, uh, for their ability to carry on their way of life, uh, we're not going to have any objection to that. But when it infringes on our rights, when they want to impose their will on our values, we will say, well, yeah, we disagree. And we won't support clause, whatever the clause is. So we don't know what they're going to ask. Mm. Next year, we are heading to the 2024 elections. And of course, uh, we have your mayor in the city of Johannesburg, Gabelo Oguamanda, um, who has, uh, you know, who is actually representing uh, your party uh, in the highest seat in this city. Uh, do you not have any concerns of how this will harm you at the polls by taking the stance? No, in fact, uh, you find that there's a by-election at the moment in Ward 7 in a place called Fine Town and Innerdale. And Action SA has put up posters that if you vote for the ANC, you're actually voting for Al Jamaa. So that means, you know, if you read it properly, and we make this joke in Parliament sometimes, the ANC is Al Jamaa light. So we don't think that it will affect us, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in working with eight political parties, some of the most uh, 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 parties who have numbers and uh, that they have confidence in asking Al Jamaa to take the lead. And uh, when, you have, uh, when you lead a government with a majority, it's very easy, it's easy peasy. But if it's eight political parties and uh, if you don't manage it properly and one of them pull out, you're thrown out as a, as a mayor. So that happened to, uh, to our first mayor where some party uh, I think it was a PA just felt, you know, that they wanted to flex their muscles, show the other parties uh, that they can break up a, a, a coalition by just walking away. So they picked on uh, 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 Tapello uh, uh, Ahmed, which we felt was doing a very good job. The deputy president of the country in parliament, when, when asked, said he's doing a good job and he's not allowed to mislead parliament. So he just felt, you know, that he's not going to weaken the coalition because we need it for 2024. Because in 2024, we feel the INC will get 50% plus one, but they need uh, more than 50% plus one. So Al Jama, because it shares the liberation values of the INC, of the founding fathers, uh, we feel that we don't want the return to white rule. We want, don't want the return to uh, apartheid. We don't want uh, certain provinces to break away and form the 56th country of Africa. So those are the kind of, uh, of values we have. And also, uh, Al Jamaa is attracting the attention of a lot of the youth because we, we, we appointed young mayors. They didn't appoint an old person like myself. Uh, I mean, I could have uh, uh, told them I'm available for the seat because there was an agreement that Al Jamaa takes the seat until 226. Uh, in fact, just a week ago, Kenny Kunaini said, Aldama must stay till 226. Mm. We need you to stabilize us because it's a very diff difficult coalition to handle. I'll just explain to you now with a by election, mm. uh, we find that uh, there were EAF people trying to ask our, ask our people to remove the gazebo. Yeah. And when they came to the leadership of the they said, no, we're working together mm. uh, with Al Jamaa. Yeah. So we does the, this mean, yeah. you know, going towards 2024, it seems as if uh, this coalition is still intact and it seems as if uh, there's a growing uh, relationship between you and the ANC. Look, we've always had the relationship for the last 10 years. We assisted the ANC to govern escort. Uh, we assisted the ANG to, to govern Harding in KZN. But last month, uh, when the ANG appointed a municipal manager uh, that we were not happy with because the community wasn't happy with him, we then voted against the ANG. 
So now they've got to, uh, they go to study, start the process again, and they came to see me and they told me, no, now what was the problem? I said, you know what, what the problem was, because of, of your factionalism, uh, out of mouth not going to be influenced. Uh, if a municipal manager uh, doesn't have the support of the residents, uh, we will vote against it. So it's not because you proposed it, you didn't even consult us. So now they said going forward, they will consult us with the election of a mayor that will meet the needs of the people of Harding. That was just last week where we, where, 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 where we met. So our relationship uh, with the ANC uh, star, uh, was entrenched a year and a half ago. Jeff Radebi came to see us uh, together with uh, the Premier and the Minister of Agriculture and said that, uh, you know, they see our position on many issues in Parliament and that they want us to also uh, assist them in implementing uh, government programs. Because if government programs work, then the INC also looks good. Right. So that's why we are very active in villages and among the youth. We, we have projects and programs in 50 villages all right. and uh, all over the youth uh, is attracted to the party and we feel that will help voter registration among the youth as they see that there is a party right. that is worthwhile uh, voting for so let us register. All right, uh, Mr. Hanif Hendricks, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time and thank you uh, for coming physically in our studio. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much.